Welcome to Wood Talk. Now here are three guys who love the smell of shellac in the morning. Mark, Shannon, and Matt. All right. What's happening, everybody? It is show number 567. And on today's show, we're talking about shoulder planes, the very super cool tools fence, and a question about router fences that Matt probably can't answer. Oh, but good. You we... put that apart in there. That's nice. Yeah. That's good. Put it in exactly as I told you I would. Uh, before we get to that, we <laughs> don't want to let you know what we would normally let you know. So, Matt, why don't you go if to the If you want to help support the show, you can wow. absolutely do that so it doesn't go away. Please visit patreon.com slash woodtalk and sign up to become a patron of this beautiful, amazing show that we've been doing for so long we want to keep on doing. It really is. It's amazing. There's a bit of desperation in your voice tonight, Matt. Oh, I'm very desperate. Don't tell Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure she knows, man. <laughs> Let's just say, I don't I'm think that's sure a secret. <laughs> we're chasing oh. her around later. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, well, let's talk about the uh, the blue elephant in the room, shall we? <laughs> that would be. Ah, our see good what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> our good friends at Rockler, and uh, so look, business is business. Let's let's put that first. Uh, we we did. I'm going to cut to the chase here. We did actually lose Rockler as a sponsor. Um, do you guys realize how long it's been that we were working with them? A while. Four years? I think, Three years. Yeah. I looked at it the other Four day years. and I subsequently forgot. So I acted like I had <laughs> information for you, but it was a substantial amount of time. And I'm surprised that they um, put up with our crap for that long. So <laughs> I call it a win. That's where we're going with. Uh, I like uh, it. <laughs> let's, let's call a spade a spade. They put up with my crap. Yeah. There you well, go. I mean, honestly, you would think it was me because I tend to be more of a smart ass, but you just generally offend people on the regular it's true. Like more consistently. It's true. So. You're just offensive. <laughs> just, yeah. just a so, uh, but yeah, that, that is the opinion. truth. And some of you may be wondering, we ne- we needed to do this show. Um, this is going to be a short show, by the way. Uh, we will answer a couple of questions uh, as well, woodworking stuff. But we got to get the business out of the way first. And a bunch of you have noticed that there have been some ads inserted into the shows. A lot of people, because they're so not used to them, were like, is it my feed that's doing it or the service I'm using? Are they inserting the ads? It's um, no, it was us. We had to move to a different platform. So shall, should we just lay out this? Well, let's lay out what happened first with as much as we reasonably can give them information about the sponsorship and how it went down. And then we'll talk about where things are going from here and what you guys can expect because you, you deserve to know where things are. I want to start by saying, first of all, uh, thank you to Rockler for working with us for that long. Um, they Absolutely. Tr- like they truly were um, instrumental in us bringing this show back from the dead and we wouldn't have done it without their support. Right. So um, a big thank you to them. There's no, especially in these situations, you can't have hard feelings. It's a business decision. I don't know the, the reasons I'm sure they have their reasons. And if they aren't getting the value out of the relationship that they want to get, um, there's no fault to be laid. It's just the way things go. I, it's no different than when I, I lost Powermatic and I lost Festool prior to that. You know what I mean? Like this, it's business. It's the way it, it goes. It's just business. All those, all those sponsors that I've gained and lost over the years. Yeah, you've, you, I, you, I you know, know tons of them, right? All the, the sponsors you never had. <laughs> that, sorry. The, the true, the true irony to this whole thing is like, I remember one of the, we're going to do a walk down memory lane now. One of our first like promos with Rockler mm-hmm. was those bandy clamps. Right. Oh, yeah. And I finally used them for what they were intended for (laughs) now that they're not sponsoring the show. Like I've been using them to hold like cords to like to the tripod of my camera or like, yeah, that's really it. Um, And, you know, occasionally I'll I'll clamp something, but like they're intended to like clamp like edge banding to plywood. Yeah. I finally did that. Look at you. And I used a whole boatload of them. Like look at my Instagram. There's like 40 of them in the frame, all clamping like solid wood (laughs) banding to plywood. And I found that truly ironic because of course there were people on Instagram going, oh, I can't wait to hear you talk about this on the show. And I'm like, yeah, well, I will, but not in the way you think. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank thank you for that, yeah. Rockler. Now that you're no longer sponsoring us, I finally got around to using those clamps that you sent us. Yeah. So, I appreciate Maybe that. that'll save us. You never know. Um, well, I did the uh, the Woodcraft visit this past weekend, and I had oh, a yeah. bunch of people mean, saying, mean. like, Woodcraft? You mean the other Rockler? You can't do this? You know, like, joking around. And I'm like, I just 
I, I'm not ready to say anything. I can't say anything because I've, I've probably told a few people just to kind of settle their minds a little bit. But I do want to make sure everyone understands that from now on, it's official. We have to refer to Rockler as the Blue Woodcraft. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the new rule right. in here. Oh. <laughs> that shouldn't right. bother anybody. Oh, great. So, so is is Lee Valley the Canadian Woodcraft then? Or yes. Can we continue that? Yeah, we'll, we'll do yeah. that. I mean, unless Woodcraft does something to, to make us angry, then I don't know. We're just going to have to call them all woodworking stores and be done with it. Um, so yeah, so let's, it is what it is. I, I certainly hope no one will begrudge Rockler making a business decision like this. We certainly don't. And we may have other opportunities to work with Rockler in a, a, a shorter term or smaller capacity in the future. That's always possible. So great company. And I still think they're uh, one of the best out there. And everything we've said on the show, you know, about their products and about the company is true, except for the parts that weren't. So that's always good, right? <laughs> Except for those things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Always got to leave those, a little possibility. Those little things. Oh, boy. Yeah. So, so what happens now? What are we going to do? What are we going to do, guys? I don't know, Mark. What are we going to do? Well, right now, yeah. we're going to play ads for eHarmony. Um, <laughs> we're going to play some Amazon ads. <laughs> um, Sounds good. Yeah. Anybody need a new mattress? Or maybe yeah. some uh, edible THC gummies? Uh, how about those? We can so do that. So, I'd, I'd actually... I like to address this um because i do have some experience in ad buys online ad buys um running them running ad campaigns mm -hmm. and like i'm pretty sure mark correct me if i'm wrong but like we're in like a category of our own in this network like there's a lot this, this is a huge podcast network probably you are listening to podcasts that are using this ad network it's very common mm -hmm. um but i'm pretty sure there's not a lot of woodworking podcasts there may not even be a lot of like hobby and crafting type podcasts, a lot of gaming podcasts, a lot of movie type stuff. So their ad network doesn't really know what to do with us. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> and ideally, you know, the user acceptance um, and people like as, as ad executives kind of shop the network, we are now part of the network or part of their catalog of offerings. Their salespeople have like, this is a great reason to go talk to tool companies. Probably this is a vertical they don't have experience with before. So a good, their sales team is now going to be using this show as a reason to, to capture ads. Mm -hmm. But for now, like they're, they're going to be very generic. Um, and you might be going, why is this ad on our show? Yeah. Over time, knocking on wood, it should get better in my experience because these are all bid processes and right now we're seeing a lot of amazon ads at the time of this recording because amazon has a lot of money to throw around mm -hmm. there's also some seasonality to this that you're going to see some of these changes so before people start writing in saying you need to get a different ad we don't really have a lot of control over that zero control. but if we get sponsors and we do get one-off ad spots we do have the ability to, to inject those but i do think that it will get better it will get more relevant um, and I also encourage people to have an open mind. Um, Mark and I were talking about this last week. Both of us have bought stuff that we learned about by listening to podcasts. Um, you know, there's more to this world than woodworking. I know I'm not allowed to say that on a woodworking podcast, but I've, I've, I've bought some great products from things that I've, you know, learned about on podcasts. So mm -hmm. please have an open mind. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, this helps buy us a cup of coffee or two right now. Yeah. Well, and ultimately it's, I hate to put it this way, but it's absolutely true. It's this or nothing. You know, we, we need to derive some income from this show. Will we get to the point that we could replace what we did with Rockler? That I'm not sure about. Here's how things are going to go down. We have joined an ad network. It is going to insert ads before the show, after the show, and during the show. That's the only way to make money off of these ads to keep this thing going. And especially now, I'm redirecting Todd, who's my full-time editor, to doing a lot of tasks for Wood Talk that were not part of his job initially, as we do everything on YouTube now, and we have the video uh, version of this too. So there's a lot more going into this show. You know, we're not going to be able to continue to pay Margaret, at least for now. So as great as Margaret was, we can't justify paying her if we're not actually making money. This whole thing, unfortunately, requires money to go, and Rockler was the source of that previously. So in addition to the ads, what, what I would suggest, especially if you are ad averse, we will have an option for you to go ad free 
just support us on Patreon. And a lot of you probably already do. So what we're yeah. going to do is turn on the private feeds in um, inside of Patreon. I haven't seen that in a while, but the last time I looked, it's pretty straightforward. When you go into your dashboard, you should be able to find our private RSS feed. That's yours. And as soon as you stop supporting us on Patreon, that feed stops working. And we'll be able to put a version of the show that does not contain those ads there. You just plug that RSS feed into whatever reader or reader. Geez, it's been a while <laughs> since I've used an RSS reader. Whatever podcast app you use, pop that thing in there and you'll be able to get the show and you'll get it the way you always have. It won't have any ads in it um, unless we bake them in somehow, but I don't think we'll, we'll even do that in this situation. So that would be the way to do it. So between Patreon, support from you guys directly there, as well as you tolerating those ads, maybe that will allow the show to keep going. And I think what we're going to probably do is a period of six months, and I'm only throwing that out there because it sounds like a reasonable number, um, to continue doing the show the way we always have with this new platform and this new system and see what happens. And I can't promise anything. I don't know. We the, For the three of us to do this show, it's a lot of justifying to the rest of our family to take the time uh, to, to do this and put the time into the prep and then all the work that gets done afterwards. So unfortunately, sometimes that, you know, the money is one of those things where you go, well, yeah, it's my job. I need I need to do this tonight. <laughs> you got to, you have to watch the kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. that justification does need to happen and, and that's how it goes. So if you already support right us now, on Patreon, I'm, you're in. Yeah, do that. Do it. Yeah. And if do you it. don't, cool kids are doing take it. a look. I think the lowest tier is two bucks a month. And so if you like this show, two bucks a month is uh, not a lot to ask. And if you don't have two bucks a month and don't want to give it to us, then you got a couple ads to listen to. And that's not that big of a deal in, in the grand scheme yeah. of things. Yep. So and also shh, you can also skip forward on a podcast app. Turn, turns out <laughs> even some of them, Shannon, have a memory in the sense where you could say for this particular podcast, skip this particular amount of time every time I hit play and you won't even yeah. have to hear them at all, which is kind it's of nice. fancy. Yeah, that's uh, overcast is, is really good for that. So yep. So that's what's going to happen here. I don't want to pull any punches and we're not, you know, we're completely open book with this stuff. Um, you know, what, what isn't helpful is if you tell us how much you hate the ads, it's not going to change anything, you know, unless you know somebody <laughs> at another company who's willing to jump in. Um, it, it, we're not going to be able to stop doing the ads unless we had a replacement large long-term sponsor. Uh, we never listened to you before. Why should we start? <laughs> Why <now>? start? Now? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for writing. Now, I care we do appreciate think, you listening. <laughs> yeah, we do. We absolutely do. And I do appreciate people's opinions. And I'm actually very sensitive to the fact that people hate ads. I get it. And that's why I've been so happy oh, yeah. that the last few years, the ads we've inserted have been very uh, organic. And when they weren't, they we made them funny, but it was relevant. It was with a very relevant yeah. company that's relevant to our market. That was a privilege. Most podcasts do not have that kind of privilege. We were very lucky to do that. But that time has come to an end. And if the show is going to continue, this is the new path that we have to embark on. And we'll see where it goes, because I don't even know for sure that this is going to work. Uh, I can tell you right we, now, after no, we turn those I mean, ads on, you know how much we're making? Not a whole lot. <laughs> Especially yeah, when you say yeah. divided Not. by three. Now, suddenly <laughs> I might be able to. Uh, you guys get paid? <laughs> well, <laughs> you're supposed to. That's my, that's my job. I don't know. I may have see, forgotten. See, I think I think it's too early. I think that eHarmony could be a real boon to the woodworking net community. You think? You know, there could be a lot of lonely guys out there. I mean, let's face it. We're woodworkers. Mm -hmm. We all got very, very lucky with our significant others. <laughs> um, you know, I'm lonely. There, there's, either that or the divorce rate's going to go up. I could use because, a friend. I don't know. Well, we whatever. need lawyers <laughs> to advertise then. You know, whatever it takes. There we go. There okay. We go. So hopefully. Certainly cheaper than pay-per-click. Yeah. Hopefully that answers your questions. And, you know, again, head over to Patreon. If you're already on Patreon, I got to turn all that stuff on. And this particular show would, will be the first one that we upload to Patreon directly to supply that feed. Also, be gentle if there are other feed, you know, podcasts, uh, apps that are not showing the latest shows or whatever. Things may take a little while to completely transfer and make sure we're populated in every directory that's out there. I had a couple people say that in Google Podcasts, there was a thing that happened, but I'm not going to fix that because Google Podcasts is going away. <laughs> they actually yeah. have said, oh, really? uh, sorry about that. We're migrating completely to YouTube music now. Oh, so yeah. if you're a Google Podcast user, 
better download that YouTube Music app because that's where you're going to have to go for everything. And we are there as well because, of course, we are right. uploading. You, you to probably got you probably got a notification in your Google Reader that told you it was going away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most likely, yeah. You know yeah. that Geek RSS joke. reader. Geek joke. <laughs> Good times, old school stuff. All right, so um, yeah, that 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 that's it's a big deal, big doings. But you know, you know who else? <laughs> Like that's not going to work anymore. Is I it? was just thinking that. I was just, you know who else needs to pay the bills? Yeah. Uh, oh, there you go. Let's roll those ads. Yeah. That's what's going to wind up happening, though, guys. We're gonna we're gonna wind up having to put a space for the mid roll uh, ads to to drop in. And apparently, if you're listening to this, they just did. So let's get to our questions. They just did. Okay. Right on. I've and got we're a question. back. And we're back. I have a question from Howard H about the very super cools, uh, super cool tool <laughs> fence. I love the people at that company. Do not like the name of the company. It's, it's very hard to say. He says, you, you had this fence and did a video on it some time ago. I noticed your new saw does not have it attached. Have you changed your mind on it? I am easily caught up in stupid marketing hype and don't want to make another $400 mistake. Okay, so here are my thoughts on that. The very super cool tools is basically they came up with a new, you know, for a Biesemeyer style fence like most uh, table saws have, they came up with a new T-square head. Is that what you would call that? The part? with the handle on it. Is that yeah. Yeah. seems sure. right? Um, yeah. So they have one of those, but they also have an aluminum extrusion that I believe they've milled to have a nice flat face. So it's, it's got a couple of T tracks in it becomes really versatile. It's a great fence. So back then I wasn't really all that familiar with uh, aluminum extrusions and T track and that 80, 20, website, but they sent me one and I put it on the saw and it was great. I used that up until I think we're in Colorado and I had Powermatic coming out to film a whole bunch of stuff at the shop. And it would, they didn't even ask me to do this. I just felt as a courtesy, I would put their fence back on their table saw because <laughs> it right. just looked, you know, we're filming stuff for them. It felt weird to have this other company's table saw fence on there. So I put that back on there and it quickly made me realize how much I missed having the little uh, space on the fence, the stock fence, the little space between the two fences <laughs> where you could put a tape measure. The crap tray? A, yeah, the crap <laughs> tray. I missed my crap <laughs> tray. So uh, after they left, I took the very super cool tools face and I put that on the fence, the Powermatic fence. That worked. It worked just fine. And I still had the benefits of the very super cool tools extrusion with the Powermatic base on it. Unfortunately, that was very heavy. Like if I ever needed to take the, the fence off of the saw, it was just a giant pain in the butt to move it around. So once I wound up you know, selling the Powermatic and, and completely moving away from that. And I got the saw stop. Well, now I had a totally different saw at this point. The uh, very super cool tools fence went with the saw that I sold. They got both fences and I had a saw stop fence. So at that point, I wanted to upgrade the saw stop because I did like the concept of the very super cool tools fence, but I didn't necessarily feel like like I needed to buy theirs because there's a lot of other aluminum extrusions out there. And I simply bought one and put that on my fence. And that's what I use. So I think if you like what they are about and you want to support a small company, that's a great place to put your money. They make a great one. I do think their extrusion has, um, you know, a lot of benefits and they've got some cool add-ons that you can use with it that won't necessarily work with a standard, you know, run-of-the-mill T-Track aluminum extrusion. So there's definitely benefits to it. I don't think it's marketing hype. I think it is what it is, but there are also other potentially cheaper ways that you can accomplish some of those tasks. So... Um, that that's my story on that. Very nice. Good job, Mark. Mm -hmm. Proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> that's a much better answer than I'm going to give to this question. Cool. This question is from Michael. <laughs> Michael says, I just got an Incro router lift and cast iron router table. It's attached to the right wing of my table saw. I'm looking for a fence, but nothing seems like a perfect fit for me. Also, is micro adjustments worth it? In all fairness, I did not select this question for myself. <laughs> Shannon did. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Oh Excellent. man. So right. So I'll, I'll, we're gonna do like my own Matt's personal opinion on on some of this, and I think this is only timely because I just bought that router table that I still haven't used yet because I haven't gotten yeah. around to doing anything router table related. Mm -hmm. uh, so first off, I hate the idea of having a router table in your table saw. I understand that's a great like floor space saver, but every time I look at that, I'm like, that just seems so inconvenient. It's so annoying and it would get in the way all the time. Just putting that out there. I agree. No, I, mean, no hate. I agree. If you don't I have had the, it and I didn't like it. If you don't have the room and you've got no other choice, sure. 
makes perfect sense. But if you do have the option to not do that, that I am right there with you. It's the whole cool. reason I got rid of my router table. Well, that's <laughs> not true, but because it was attached to a table saw. <laughs> it was it was the last router table I it had went before with I it. got rid of it. Yeah. So <laughs> it pretty much, the door yeah. and it went with it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so as far as like fences that are gonna like work or be compatible with an Inc router lift and a cast iron router table, I don't really know like how universal most of the um, insert tops are. I know for the Harvey that I have, I don't think any other fences will fit in it because it doesn't use the standard like T-bolt slots for the fence. It has a much wider slot that it has like bearings that ride in. So. I don't know, like what what's compatible with what. So we're gonna focus in on this micro adjustment thing, which I also don't have a real opinion for because I've never had like actual micro adjustment on my fence. I've had the micro adjust of you, you loosen the knob, you give it a little tappy tap, and then you tighten it back up again. That's my mm -hmm. micro adjust for my entire life. So yeah. squinting. That's one of the. Th that's <laughs> I've been doing that. Just give it a little tap, run your yeah. test again. Is it was it enough? Nope. Get a little more. Yeah. Tippy tap. So I've never like known like how much tap, the fence tap, is actually tap. moving because I'm always just pivoting in it too. So I don't know what the actual movement is at the bit. I only know what the movement is at the clamp, mm, whatever that, okay. you know, whatever the trigonometry would be to get that distance over here versus over here off your pivot mm -hmm. point. Cause it's a long, it's a long triangle. It's trig. You could do it. I'm sure. not going to, um, but that's one of the things that I was most interested with on the Harvey fence was it has micro adjusts for both moving the whole fence in and out. And then of course, for setups, if you want to have one fence offset from the other one, it's got micro adjusts for that too. So it seems like an amazing way to go as far as like how much I'll actually use it versus just slapping the fence. We will see. I will definitely follow up and give some more feedback once they actually get some use on this thing. But it seems like it's one of those things that like it is nice if it's well executed. Mm -hmm. That's the problem, I think. If you yeah. have a micro adjust that is actually well executed, easy to use, that you actually use it and it actually works is yeah. the stumbling block. I think of a lot of things in the shop where it's like it's marketing. Oh, yeah, it's got micro adjust. Does it? <laughs> Does it though? I can think of one thing specifically that. <laughs> yeah, I just saw. I know you can. Adjust. That was that was it for you. Not. That was a callback to a previous okay. text. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but is it AI powered micro adjust? And that's what it has to be, right? It's got to be AI powered. In order that to is be these days. That's all that matters. Uh, well, they also I would... have that the CNC fence now too. That some people are like, why didn't you buy this? I'm like, I guess I could have. We're like, mm -hmm. you just put it in what what distance you want and it'll move. I'm like, I just again, it goes back to the CNC thing. Like, I just kind of want to do it myself. Yeah, I just yeah. feel like I want to do it myself. And with that one too, like. Because it has that long track thing, you can't get the the router table up against the wall anymore because it's got mm. it sticks out past the back of the tables. It's like a sliding miter saw. Uh, well, like the Incra, got, the Incra fence has that big honking it, thing. Yeah, it does. That one does too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have room for that. I think you'll get use of the micro adjustment. I think if you're, I mean, it depends on how much joinery you do on on the. That's the other the thing tool. too. Is I don't do a whole lot of router table joinery myself, but maybe yeah. Michael does. Yeah, I think the, the time I use it the most that I could think of is the sliding dovetail when you're trying to sneak up on the, the male side yeah. and get mm -hmm. that perfect fit. Man, is it great for that. But most of the other time, you're just, you know, a lot of times you're using a bearing guided bit, you know, or you're trying to right. line the fence up with the bearing, which that it's nice for that too. I mean, but the, of course you could tap it there as well. But once you get used to having the micro adjust, I think you'll, you'll probably get a lot of use out of it. I recommend it. Good. I'm hoping. Yeah, to I used to say that about the there. lift. <laughs> Before I had a lift, I had a Jessam lift and I used to think like, why do I need this level of adjustability? It was more about, you know, adjusting from above the table mm -hmm. back in the days when that was a brand new spanking thing. But I did find the ability to like, you know, the, the dial on there to just pull it up a thou, you know, for those operations where the depth of the bit changed things, yeah. not a sliding dovetail. In other it words. definitely falls into like the creature comforts, like umbrella oh, yeah. of the shop. Yeah, no doubt about it. Hmm. And I think, uh, so the Harvey has it. Woodpeckers has one that has micro adjust. I believe Jessam has a thing you can add to their fence to get micro adjust. And Incra, of course, has micro adjust. I don't, there may be more, but I know those for sure in terms of what you were talking about, quality and actually being, being able to execute on it properly. I know from firsthand experience that all of those will do that. Depending. I guess it depends on the implementation again of that because... Like the the Triton Work Center, the one I had previously, it's got micro adjust, but it's like a separate bolt thing you bolt behind the fence, 
and then you undo the fence's bolt and there's like an, uh, there's another bolt on that adjust mechanism that pushes the fence for you. So mm-hmm. it has it, but it's not as nice and convenient of it's right on the fence already. You just undo one little thing and spin a knob and you're there. Yeah. That's how woodpeckers works. It's an add on. Okay. Which is not ideal now that you mention it because <laughs> it, it, it <laughs> limits how your depth. You can only go so far back with, with the fence and still be able to use that thing. So, well, there you go. Hmm. Okay. Hopefully. See, and Matt thought he wasn't going to have much to say. Look at you. I pull the Shannon. Look at me go. Look at that. <laughs> Never want to pull um, the Shannon. <laughs> I got a, yeah, bad results happen. Anyway, um, I got a question here and I sincerely apologize. I forgot to write down who submitted that question and I've already deleted it from the inbox. So Oof. we'll just call him Joe. <laughs> Thanks for writing in Joe. Mm-hmm. Um, he says, I don't do a lot of mortise and tenon where shoulder plane has been necessary. However, I just got done with a trestle dining table and I found two textbook cases of needing a shoulder plane. One was the wider tenon on the trestle, the through tenon. Uh, and I borrowed a friend's shoulder plane for that. The other was the breadboard end and I didn't have the shoulder plane and I just worked my way through it. But if I had a shoulder plane, I might have tried it. I'm already considered a premium two inch chisel for pairing in general use. Am I correct in assuming that I'd be better off with a chisel to carefully pair and undercut the tenon shoulder? Shoulders. Is this one of those things where you just get the shoulder plane and accept it doesn't get used unless it's the only appropriate tool for the job? So what are your thoughts on a shoulder plane versus a chisel to try and do the same thing? If he's heard anything that I've talked about shoulder planes in the past, he probably doesn't want me to answer this question because I am staunchly against shoulder planes. I think they're completely useless. But I will I will channel Mark for those of you watching YouTube saw that Mark just got up and left because he's got a meatloaf in the oven. Um, but in Mark's <laughs> hybrid woodworking book, he does mention the shoulder Cha-ching! plane. ching 34 cents so, or whatever the hell um, it is. <laughs> the, the, the person who wrote this, and again, I apologize, I didn't write your name down. He did put at the beginning that he doesn't own a table saw. He does most of his tenon work with like a handsaw and a bandsaw. So this is where, where I find a shoulder plane is useful is if you're starting with a relatively uniform surface. A shoulder plane is great for truing up, go figure, a tenon shoulder. If your tenon shoulder is quite ragged to begin with, the shoulder plane can actually get you in trouble. So in other words, if he had a table saw and he was cutting his tenon shoulders on the table saw, you know, using a tenon jig or just a miter, uh, miter gauge or whatever, and you're getting a straight cut in that tenon shoulder, the shoulder plane plane is great to take like a thousandth of an inch off the entire length of the shoulder. That could be great in that wide trestle tenon, possibly in a wide breadboard in, although I think that might be too wide and the shoulder plane might clog on you. If you're cutting your tenon shoulders with like a bandsaw or you're cutting with a handsaw and you're, you're not real confident in your ability to saw a straight line, the shoulder plane could actually end up, th- it'll flatten your shoulder, but it might actually throw it out of coplanar with the opposite shoulder. Or you could end up not 90 degrees to the long axis of that tenon board. Because what the shoulder plane will do is take a continuous pass from end to end and you can't really see what you're doing. So the counterpoint to that, he says, is I'm considering a premium two inch chisel. I would go with the chisel over a shoulder plane 99% of the time because I can see exactly where I'm removing wood. So what you do, you've cut that tenon and you fit it and you see, okay, the shoulders don't match up properly. Well, with the chisel, you can undercut that shoulder and help mate it up a little bit more, but you also can pay attention to where there's a gap. In other words, The converse of that, where's the high spot? And I can remove wood just from that high spot. You can do this with a shoulder plane, but you know, well, I'm I'm, I'm taking like a quarter pass here and the shoulder plane covers up where the blade is cutting. It's kind of hard to see where you're removing wood. The chisel, you've got the ability to turn on a dime of the thing, you can remove from exactly where you want to remove it. So the fact that he starts out by saying, I don't do a lot of mortise and tenon where a shoulder plane has been necessary, which is kind of an interesting loaded statement to begin with. If you haven't had a need up until this point, I would cons- I would insist that you probably don't going forward. The breadboard, to me, that's a better opportunity to use a rabbit plane than a shoulder plane, or more importantly, use a saw and a fence and chisel out your waist. I'll also say that not only should you go with the chisel for this, do not buy a premium two inch chisel. Go to a flea market, go to an antique store and buy a wide beater vintage chisel. This is a pairing chisel. The steel does not have to be the latest and greatest A101 cryogenically treated. It can be soft, frankly, because you're not gonna be pounding on this. You're gonna be pairing with it and you're gonna be able to get a wider chisel. Two inches is about the max that people make these days unless you get into like timber framing stuff and they're expensive. So go to an antique store and buy like a two and a half inch wide chisel 
Maybe you won't have the handle on it. You have to put the handle on yourself. You'll save a fortune. And for something that you're kind of not sure about, I really don't think you're going to see the need. I have a bunch of wide pairing chisels with the exception of one from Blue Spruce, which is a one and a half inch chisel. The rest of them are all vintage and I've been using them for years. And I feel they actually feel and work better than the modern steel that I've worked with. So save money all around, go with the chisel. I also, uh, sorry, I'm going to get on my my hand tool school preaching here, but that use of a chisel is going to make you a better woodworker. It's going to improve your chisel handling skills and every tool in woodworking is derived from the chisel. You know, a saw is a bunch of little chisels all in line. You know, a plane is a chisel held at a specific angle. So if you're good with a chisel, it will help you be good with all your other tools. Hmm. So there you go. Shoulder plane, bad. Chisel, good. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, well, I guess that's gonna do it for us today. I don't have a way to yeah. end the show <laughs> like I normally do. Yeah, know. well, <laughs> you know, have to do we, we want to, we do want to continue to thank Rockler, not because they're sponsoring us, but because they did sponsor us for so many years yeah. and we still buy a lot of stuff from Rockler. So keep, keep buying stuff from Rockler. But too much. if you want to be like Rockler and support the show, you want to oh, be the Rockler? To, <laughs> you want to be the new Rockler, the next Rockler. Yeah. And we can call you the purple Rockler or the green Rockler. You can oh, choose your color. Please. Little baby Go to Patreon.com. Yeah, all the mini rocklers and the, the anti meridian and the post meridian and all the little meridians. <laughs> deep cut, folks, deep uh-huh. cut. Go watch Johnny Dangerous if you haven't seen it. And then go to patreon.com slash woodtalk and sponsor the show. And you know what? Maybe you'll get ad free or maybe you'll like the ads and you'll listen to it no matter what. In the meantime, send us some questions. Go to woodtalkshow.com to fill out the form there or email us at woodtalkshow at gmail.com. That's all I got. All right. Bye bye. Awesome. Well, Bye-bye. thank you for listening, everybody. And I guess we'll see you. No, wait a minute. We're going to take some time off. <laughs> we decided. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot. We should get that in there. Um, as we're doing all of this, we wanted to get this show out oh, really yeah. quickly. But we are going to take a little time off. Uh, take a couple of... Probably we'll see you in March. I think that's what we're looking at at this point. So last show until March. Hopefully that's okay. It's going to have to be because that's what we're doing. <laughs> Hopefully that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> But I want to make sure you guys know that so you don't expect another show uh, toward the end of this month, right? I expect nothing from us. No, no. Your (laughs) expectations are generally low. It's probably safe. Right where they should be. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for listening, everybody, as always. And we will see you next time. Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? We're not. We're not. Who knows? (laughs) Maybe we quit again. I don't know. (laughs) Maybe we got fired. That's what happened. Who knows? Yeah. We didn't quit. We were fired. There you go. We got laid off. We got laid off. off, Right. My resume says laid off. (laughs) 